Good morning, Salaamu Alaikum. My name's Tom Speechley, and uh, as just been said, I, I run an investment platform at a garage that's dedicated to small and medium enterprises. It's currently a $500 million platform. Uh, we hope to increase it over the next two or three years to probably near a billion. It's focused on the MENA region, including Pakistan. And um, we've made 10 investments in the last six months or so. Um, we plan on making probably up to 150 over the next four years. And one of the reasons I'm here today actually is because we're looking to make investments in Pakistan in the near future. The address today is really to discuss why entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship and the companies they run, small and medium companies in particular, are so vitally important to our economy and indeed to the well-being of the entire region. And then secondly, how we can support them and nurture them. It comes down to this. Not only do we have a responsibility to support SMEs, but if we do, the payback will be enormous for investors, for governments, for everybody, for all stakeholders. So why exactly are SMEs so important? There are really three reasons I can name. Firstly, they're a major contributor to innovation in a fast-evolving world. Secondly, they are the engine of future economic growth. And thirdly, they're a critical source of social and economic stability in developing markets such as Pakistan's. On the issue of innovation, I think it's, I'm not going to labour the point, but I think it's quite obvious that new business models, new ways of doing things, quite often are the result of an entrepreneur rather than a large corporation. That's what entrepreneurship's generally about. Facebook did not come from Microsoft, and Skype did not come from IBM. It's why Silicon Valley is so important and such a significant contributor to the success of the US economic uh, development over the last 20 years. And what's more, the pace of innovation is, is rapidly changing. And the reason for that is because the cost of innovation is coming down enormously. It used to be the case that you'd need to go to a venture capital firm and raise half a million dollars to develop a new business model. With the advent of cloud computing, software as a service, all you need is a laptop, access to a network, and about $50,000, and you can create something as big as Facebook at $50 billion. And angel, angel investing, um, which is actually not particularly what we do, angel investing, which is earlier stage, which is ten, twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, is actually an in, enormously important part of the ecosystem um, that we need to address. But let me talk about, um, in addition to the, the question of innovation, why SMEs are so vitally important to the economy. And this is really vital given the state of the region at the moment with so much youth unemployment. What we've been seeing, witnessing on the streets of Cairo and in other cities in the region is largely a function of a disaffected youth with no opportunity to plough their economic endeavours. 90%, more than 90% of all businesses in Pakistan are small and medium enterprises. And more than 70% of all employment in the country is from small and medium enterprises. Moreover, SMEs are in virtually every sector you can imagine. They, to this day, they remain the market leaders in many, sec in many sectors. And they contribute something like 25% to Pakistan's export revenues. And this is not the case, by the way, in a lot more in more developed markets. What you find in, as economies mature is that the most successful companies in a sector acquire the less successful or, eat, or buy up um, market share, and you end up with lots of large multinationals dominating. In markets like ours here in Pakistan and the rest of MENA, SMEs still predominate. Now, another interesting statistic is that although SMEs account for over 90% of all businesses and something like 70% of employment, they only contribute about 30% to GDP. In more developed markets, such as the United States, the United Kingdom, you find that that number is closer to 50%. SMEs contribute 50% to employment and about 50% to GDP. And what that shows about our SMEs is that they are relatively unproductive. That's bad news on one hand, but it's good news on the other because it's a great opportunity to improve their productivity, to swell GDP, and to unleash this pent-up productive capacity. And that's a very large reason why Abraj Capital is investing in this space today. 
we see there's so much growth available in the segment that the opportunity to make good investments and profitable returns for our investors is significant. So in summary, SMEs represent the engine of future economic growth. But more than that, they are also catalysts for economic development more generally and for diversification. They are the mechanism through which developing economies can become less reliant on imports of goods, services or whatever. Just to illustrate the power of SMEs to create jobs, between 1980 and 2005 in the United States, an economy which you'd think is extremely mature um, and where the ability to create additional uh, labor, uh, jobs would be, would be less, less opportune, more than 40 million new jobs were created in that period from businesses that were less than five years old. That's a startling statistic, 40 million new jobs from businesses that were less than five years old. And that touches upon the final reason why SMEs are so important. They're a vital source of social and economic stability in the region. By definition, most people work in SMEs. And looking forward, if we can create 40 million new jobs from SMEs, the impact on our society will be profound, touching upon economic liberation from poverty, alleviation of social divisions, and the sustainable growth of a diversified economy. Their importance cannot be overstated. So let me now address how we can support SMEs so that we can deliver all of these hoped-for outcomes. SMEs have a variety of needs, and you can conveniently split them into financial on the one hand and the enabling environment on the other. And that's quite convenient because essentially the private sector should be in one, finance, and the public sector in the other, the enabling environment. environment. Finance can mean anything from angel finance, bank debt, private equity, public equity. And undoubtedly, SMEs need greater access to all. Some banks are providing finance to SMEs, but more can. Of the total number of loans made in Pakistan, only 16% by volume go to SMEs. And yet, this is the segment that employs 70% of the population and more than 90% of all enterprises. But personally, I don't blame the banks. A lot of high-growth SMEs aren't particularly suitable for bank debt. They're not ready for bank debt. They're not bankable. Many are suited to long-term patient capital in the form of equity. And so for most companies in the growth phase, what they need is private equity. I blame my industry, the private equity industry, more than any other for its failure to address this financing need for the SME segment. If you look at the amount of private equity in the MENA region, it's pathetically low at less than 1% assets under management to GDP. In India, it's 4%, and the United States, it's 7%. It's no surprise that where you see a lot of private equity, you see a lot of economic growth. So private equity would be a great, um, extra private equity would be very important. And private equity is extremely well suited to financing entrepreneur-led businesses, high growth businesses. Why? Because it's patient. It can be there for up to eight years or nine years. There's no interest requirement. There's no interest coupon to pay. And it comes with a raft, typically, of non-financial benefits, strategic support, operational support, access to sophisticated business networks, institutionalization, you name it. Private equity, the whole private equity toolkit, which has been tried and tested across many markets, is particularly well suited to, to supporting SMEs. People should also realize that SME investing can be extremely profitable. Of the 14 exits that we've had in the SME segment, we've returned nearly six times our money to our investors. And it's another reason why we thought it necessary two years ago to launch Riyadh Enterprise Development with a view to going back into SMEs, a branch having started in SMEs 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago, but having evolved into a $6 billion private equity fund, um, which is investing in larger companies. Just before I leave finance, um, let me make one crucial point. Finance must be provided by the private sector. It cannot be provided by the public sector. Only the private sector has the true discipline to make good investments and put profit first. If you want economically sustainable growth, you have to invest with the discipline of the market. And that means letting bad companies fail and only supporting the good ones. Governments, on the other hand, rightly have, profit, uh, have uh, policy to, to look at before profit. And that can get in the way of economic sustainable growth. So we should avoid the grant mentality, 
which does not create economically sustainable growth, diversification or growth. Governments that have money should give it to the private sector. Turning now to the second way we can support SMEs, the non-financial, the enabling environment, governments can and must play a leading role. And here, in many ways, they've been doing a good job across the region. I'm talking about establishing an environment in which enterprise and entrepreneurship can flourish. Much is being done. One must applaud the work, for example, of SMEDA. One must support, support, applaud the work of the All World Network, which has launched the Pakistan Fast Growth 25, an index that identifies the fastest growing companies. Incidentally, um, I'm sure you'll be hearing more about it, but the Pakistan Fast Growth 25 have broken the All World records for growth across the eight countries that they cover. In other words, Those 25 companies, homegrown in Pakistan, have posted average growth rates of 81% over a three-year period. They've also created 12,000 jobs. And that is the power of entrepreneurship. It's the power to create jobs, it's the power to innovate, it's the power to support talent. And events like this are also vitally important. They're important for raising awareness, for bringing the ecosystem together, for showing what is being done, actually, and for exploring what more can be done. For our part, as I said, we're, we're actively investing in SMEs, and I look forward to speaking with entrepreneurs, maybe in this audience, who have businesses they would like capital, raise capital for. Uh, on the non-investment side, we launched a website, a portal dedicated to entrepreneurship. It's called WAMDA. It's one of the sponsors today. There is a WAMDA studio out front which is looking to interview some of you to give inspiring stories of what worked and how, you can support, how we should support entrepreneurship. Let me end by just recapping. What is at stake here is significant and what can be gained is enormous. In my view today, SMEs represent the single best investment opportunity in the region, and especially here in Pakistan. SMEs are also the best opportunity for diversified economic growth and job creation, and to take economies like Pakistan through the next 10 or more years with the confidence of increasing relevance in today's fast evolving world. Thank you very much. was a great speech and a wonderful thing that you said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My That's player. That's great. My player. You're doing wonderful for Pakistan. Thank you. I think this will bring entrepreneurship. Thank you very much.